Law of contract. Intention to create legal relations. The requirement of intention to create legal relations in contract law is aimed at sifting out cases which are not really appropriate for court action. Not every agreement leads to a binding contract which can be enforced through the courts. For example, you may have an agreement to meet a friend at a pub. You may have a moral duty to honor that agreement, but not a legal duty to do so. This is because in general the parties to such agreements do not intend to be legally bound and the law seeks to mirror the party's wishes. In order to determine which agreements are legally binding, the law draws a distinction between social and domestic agreements and agreements made in a commercial context. The distinction between social and domestic agreements and commercial agreements can be fine. The case of Coward v. Motor Insurance Bureau concerned a person giving his work colleague a lift to work on his motorcycle in return for a small fee to cover the petrol cost. This was held to be a social and domestic agreement and not binding. Whereas in Albert v. Motor Insurance Bureau which also concerned giving a co-worker a lift to work in return for petrol money, the court held it was a commercial agreement. This was because the lifts were given in a car so he was able to give lifts to more than one person and to different people over a period of time. In social and domestic agreements the law raises a presumption that the parties do not intend to create legal relations. Jones v. Padavatin concerned an agreement between a mother and daughter. The mother purchased a house for her daughter to live in. In return the daughter promised to come to England and to study to become a barrister. The daughter did not complete her studies and the mother was able to evict her as their agreement was a social and domestic agreement. Similarly, the agreement between husband and wife was not enforceable in Balfour v Balfour, as they were happily married when he agreed to send home the payments. This presumption of no intention may be rebutted by evidence to the contrary. That is if it can be shown the parties did intend their agreements to be legally enforceable. This could be where the parties have put their agreement in writing showing that they wish it to be enforced. This was seen in Errington v Errington Woods where an agreement between a father, his son, and daughter-in-law, was enforceable as it was in writing. Whereas husband and wife agreements would normally raise a presumption of no intention, where the parties are separated this may not apply. In Merritt v Merritt, an agreement to make maintenance payments was binding, as the parties were separated at the time of the agreement. A further way in which a social and domestic agreement can be binding, is where there is a third party to the agreement. In Simpkins v Pays, the agreement to share lottery winnings between a grandmother and granddaughter was binding as the lodger was also party to the agreement. In commercial agreements, the law raises a presumption that the parties do intend to create legal relations by the agreement. This was seen in Esso Petroleum v Commissioners of Customs and Excise, where Esso offered free World Cup coins with every four gallons of petrol purchased. This offer was an enforceable part of the contract since it was made in a commercial context and aimed at increasing the sales of petrol. Similarly, in Edwards v Skyways, a payment described as ex gratia, a gift, was enforceable as it was given in a commercial context of employer and employee. Again, this presumption can be rebutted by evidence to the contrary. For example, where there is a binding in honor only clause such as those contained in gambling contracts. In Jones v Vernon Pools, the claimant sent in a winning entry for the football pools. The defendant claimed they did not receive it. The court held, it did not matter whether they received it or not, as they were not obliged to pay out even if they had received it. In summary, it is presumed that the parties do not intend to create legal relations in social and domestic agreements, but this presumption can be displaced where there is evidence the parties did intend their agreement to be binding. The position is reversed in commercial contracts where it is presumed the parties do intend to create legal relations, unless there is evidence to show they did not. This video is part of a series of videos on contract law from www.e-lawresources.co.uk. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel www.youtube.com slash at e-lawresources. It's free to do so and will help us to keep providing these videos. Check out our website which provides lecture outlines and case summaries. See also www.e-lorevision.org.uk for revision games and quizzes. Thanks for watching.